hi guys welcome to medico pharma lectures and this is the fifth lecture on organic chemistry today we are going to discuss about analysis of organic compounds analysis of organic compounds can be divided into qualitative analysis and quantitative analysis first of all we will see qualitative analysis actually qualitative analysis of organic compounds involves detection of elements in this first of all we will see detection of carbon and hydrogen atom so here yeah, the procedure involves reaction of organic compounds with cupric oxide in presence of a strong heat leading to formation of products which on passing through an hydrous copper sulfate and then bubbling through lime water gives two results the first one is copper sulfate solution turns blue that indicates presence of hydrogen and second one is lime water turns milky that detect carbon presence in the compound moving to detection of nitrogen sulfur and halogens detection of nitrogen sulfur and halogen is done by lessing's test for this lessing's extract or sodium fusion extract is prepared this is a rough diagram for the preparation of sodium fusion extract the first step of preparation of sodium fusion extract is heating of sodium and organic compound till red hot as all the fumes cease to be evolved then the ignition tube is plunged in distilled water having 10 to 15 ml volume and crushed after that the content obtained is boiled and finally the boiled content is filtered while still hot and lessing's extract is prepared now we will see different sodium extract solutions for foreign elements sodium carbon and nitrogen forms sodium cyanide which have ionic form sodium plus and cyanide nitrogen minus sorry minus likewise sodium and sulfur fuse to form sodium sulfide sodium carbon nitrogen and sulfur fuse to form sodium sulfocyanide and finally sodium and halogen forms sodium halide
test of nitrogen sodium cyanide extract is prepared then sodium reacts with water to form sodium hydroxide and hydrogen the sodium hydroxide is treated with ferrous sulfate which forms ferrous hydroxide and sodium sulfate the formed ferrous hydroxide is treated with the sodium cyanide extract to form sodium ferrocyanide and sodium hydroxide the sodium ferrocyanide reacts with ferric chloride to form ferric ferrocyanide and sodium chloride the ferric ferrocyanide has a color of persian blue or greenish but there is certain exceptions like for urea and its derivatives urea and its derivatives don't respond to this test due to less amount of carbon so sugar cane is added in a small quantity to increase the carbon content likewise hydrazine also don't give this test as carbon is absent moving to test of sulfur it is done by two methods the first method is by sodium nitroperoxide solution sodium sulfide extract is prepared and then it is treated with sodium nitroperoxide which forms sodium sulfo nitroperoxide the sodium sulfo nitroperoxide has a color violet or purple which indicate presence of sulfur in the compound likewise the second method is by lead acetate the sodium extract for sulfur is treated with lead acetate which forms lead sulfide and sodium acetate the lead sulfide has black color this is a precipitate test for nitrogen and sulfur the sodium sulfo cyanide extract is prepared and then treated with ferric chloride to form ferric sulfo cyanide which have blood red color that indicates presence of nitrogen and sulfur in the compound moving to test for halogens it involves silver nitrate nitrate test sodium halide extract is prepared by fusing sodium and halogen it is boiled with few drops of hno3 to remove impurities like cyanide sulfide and carbonate the extract is then treated with silver nitrate which forms silver halide and sodium nitrate this is general procedure for halogens now test for chloride 
sodium chloride extract is prepared then treated with silver nitrate which forms silver chloride having curdy white precipitate the silver chloride is treated with ammonium hydroxide which forms a colorless product which is then treated with nitric acid that leads to formation of curdy white precipitate that is silver chloride which is soluble in ammonium hydroxide test for bromine sodium bromide extract is prepared and treated with silver nitrate silver bromide is formed having a light yellow precipitate or pale yellow precipitate color along with sodium nitrate the AgBr reacts with ammonium hydroxide to form a colorless product along with water then the colorless product is treated with nitric acid to form a light yellow precipitate that is sparingly soluble in ammonium hydroxide it is AgBr now moving to test for iodine sodium iodide extract is prepared by fusing sodium and iodine and then the extract is treated with silver nitrate to form silver iodide precipitate having yellow color which is insoluble in ammonium hydroxide now halogens can be also detected detected by other tests like copper wire test or bellstein test this test is utilized for presence of halogens in organic compound it is a not sure test as compounds like urea and thiourea also give color to flame the procedure involves organic compounds are kept on copper wire and heated which produce greenish or blue green flame that indicates presence of halogen the greenish or blue green flame is due to volatile copper halide formation now detection of phosphorus it is detected by ammonium molybdate solution and concentrated nitric acid the tetravalent phosphorus reacts with Na2O2 in presence of oxygen to form sodium phosphate which have yellow color and the sodium phosphate reacts with ammonium molybdate in presence of HNO3 to form ammonium phosphate molybdate and this indicates presence of phosphorus now moving to another subtopic quantitative analysis in that first one is estimation of carbon and hydrogen by Leibniz method carbon reacts with 
oxygen to form carbon dioxide whereas hydrogen reacts with oxygen to form water estimation of nitrogen is done by dumas method estimated by release of free n2 gas on heating a non mass of organic compound with cupric oxide zedal's method this is the second method for the estimation of nitrogen estimated by release of NH2 gas catalyst mixture is of copper sulfate and potassium sulfate now estimation of halogens can be done can be done by carrier's method or robertson method or asbots method estimation of sulfur involves carrier's method whereas estimation of phosphorus involves carrier's method but estimation of oxygen involves lewis method thank you guys hope you understood i'll be back with a very interesting topic